Hi, I'm Bob Hanrahan, Application Engineering at Texas Instruments. This is a series on measuring power supplies. Here we'll be measuring efficiency of a power supply. Now, measuring efficiency is all about accurately measuring the input power and the output power, specifically the input and output voltage and the input and output current. What we see often is inaccuracies where the voltage is measured and how the current is measured. We then would take these measurements and graph them and study these graphs. So the first thing you want to do is determine at what voltage input levels we want to make our measurements and at what load currents. Now I like using Excel for logging my results and I'll show you a spreadsheet I've prepared. As you can see, I have three input voltage levels. You want to take your expected input voltage and then something above it and something below it to see how it behaves at its extremes. As far as the output current, I plan to run this board at 8 amps, so I always choose some load current well above that so I can see how it behaves at those extremes. You might be right on the edge of maybe going into a current limit or some instability, and you want to know about that, and you'll only know about that by increasing that output current. So you want to take your maximum current and about six to 10 other steps to give you a nice clean graph. In this case, I use eight, six, four, two, and then I go down to some low current, in this case, a half amp. Okay, let's take a look at the equipment we'll be using here today. So we have a voltmeter on the input to this board. This is an LM. 5117 happens to be a buck regulator that we're using for the demonstration. I have a probe right at the input to the board and then a voltmeter hanging right off the output. You don't even want to go one inch away because this, just that IR drop will end up in inaccuracies that will be a problem. And you surely don't want to measure your voltage at your source, your uh, power supply uh, or, your, or your load. Other equipment that we'll be using at the bottom, you see our power supply. This is capable of the output voltage and current necessary. We have a load box that's connected to the output, dynamic load in this case. And for the current meter, I'll be using the current meter within the dynamic load for the output. But for the input, what I like to do, I like to use a shunt resistor, a precision shunt resistor such as these, uh, at a resistance of 1 ohm or below. I use 0.1 ohms and I just then measure the voltage drop across them. So let's, let's start in. What I will start with is 15 volts on the power supply as you see here. I'll turn my power supply on and as you'll see we're putting out 12 volts, no current yet because I didn't turn the load box on. And we have our measurement of about 15 volts on the input. I'll then turn my load box on to my first step, which is a half amp. Now you will notice that the input voltage dropped. That is the IR drop of the input cable. So the technique I like to use is just increase your power supply voltage. No need to look at the power supply, just increase it until you have exactly 15 volts at the input to the power supply. And there it is, 15 volts. So now the input voltage is fixed, your output current is fixed. The only two measurements we need to log is the input current move the decimal over one because of the 0.1 ohm resistor, so that's 444 milliamps, and the output voltage of 12.017. So we'll go over and we'll log that into Excel. 0.444 and 12.017. And then it's an iterative process where we'll now adjust the output load, the load box, for the next step. In this case, we move up to 2 amps. Okay, there's 2 amps. Once again, 
there's an IR drop because of the additional current on the input, so we need to step that input voltage up until we have 15 volts on the input. And now we measure our input current, 1.64 amps. And our output voltage of 12.016. and we let the tool do the efficiency calculations. Now, before we started, I took the liberty of capturing all the data points. It's a little over a dozen points here with the appropriate efficiencies calculated out, and we graph them. Now, with an efficiency graph, you can learn a lot about your design. I almost always run efficiency measurements before any other test. The reason for that is your efficiency curves can identify problems within your system. Almost always when there's an issue, it'll affect efficiency. As an example, if you have some type of an instability at some load, your efficiency curve will show a droop. Or if you're going into some type of a constant current operation, there'll be a linear drop off of your efficiency. So in summary, Efficiency measurement is not difficult, but it's important that it's accurate. Make sure you probe right at the input and the output of your system, and make sure you use the right tools to measure current. For more information, visit the following web addresses.